So earlier in uh, 31 Days of Soap, Miss, I was talking about how I don't see a whole lot of soapers at vending, at, you know, events or whatever, whenever I go and attend just to support. But that's totally not true because I was at Tide Fest this year because that's an annual tradition for me. I get all of our gifts from all the local. There was a soaper there. She recognized me and I blushed so freaking hard. Like that was... I guess I wasn't expecting it. It is weird whenever I do get recognized in public and it happens more and more. But that one, I guess I was just 100% not expecting because it's like, well, this is my my home home grounds. You know, you're here at the high school. You're anyway, uh, she recognized me and uh, she was delightful. And she continued to talk to me, even though I was like super red in the face and all the things. Greatest conversation with her ever. Seriously, her husband is there. Her setup is freaking amazing. Brilliant. 10 out of 10. He made her a a sink that it's awesome. Anyway, I wanted to shout her out because she she knows stuff like she knows stuff stuff. She has never once, not one time ever commented in my comments, but she knows like deep lore. So she's always here. So shout out, uh, shout out buttered soapery actually. And I'm going to show you, she's out of a uh, Kingston, Washington. And this is really cool actually, because she does the first thing that she said, as I started to look at her soaps or whatever, she's like, I know you don't do goat's milk. I know you don't do lard. And I'm like, no, I mean, I don't make them, but I do them, you know, like I want to try your soaps. And so this one is a spiced butter goat milk, lard soap. Look how beautiful her packaging is, by the way. And then you see the the thing there says recycled lard and, you know, the ingredients, super, super simple, all the things. Absolutely stunning. Such a great idea for her lard as well as like her palm. She has essentially she's upcycling second use, you know, oils and stuff that have been used for donut shops and, you know, those sorts of things. And so she's wholly sustainable with everything, gets everything from local, uh, you know, all the jazz so freaking amazing. I'm going to go check out her website. You guys go check it out, butteredsoapery.com. She's not a Project Soapway winner. She's not a Sudzer Sudzer as in like she's in the Discord or even like talks to any of us. But she's out there. We've spotted her because she spotted me. And it was a, a lovely, lovely conversation. I love everything about what it is that she's doing in the soapy business and the soapy world. And you need to keep it up. Her husband was also awesome. He made this guy. It's called 80s Fat Boy. Goat milk mango soap. I don't know what the goat milk mango soap is because as soon as I smelled it, I said, that's leather and uh, patchouli. And they said, it's leather and something else. And I'm not going to tell you the other thing because that's her secret. And if she wants to share it, she can, that can be her very first comment on the thing. And if she shows up, you guys all need to tell her hi and say, where have you been? We've been waiting for your entire lives. That's it. That is the longest intro I've had in a really long time. And I've been trying so hard to, you know, kind of tone it down in the intro and be a little bit more normal but not today i'll tell you what we're doing today in just a minute but before i do hello i'm mrs soap and clay let's make stuff How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 17 of 31 Days of Soap Miss. And today, we are making a beer soap. But while we're making it, we're doing an FAQ. Because it's been a while since we've done one of those guys. And I've had a lot of questions on old videos, like new comments, old videos. You get it. It's a thing that just about e-waxes and what types of e-waxes can be used and what can be subbed. Now, I have done specific videos on that, but... Thought we could do a quick primer on that, as well as a couple other frequently asked cues within all of this, so we can maybe finish this year up with hopefully checking off every 
FAQ I wanted to get off of my list this year, you know? So let's get to the pouring of um, Oktoberfest. I'm pretty sure it's Oktoberfest. I'm not really sure. I'm restocking for the 2024 because I'm out of everything at soapandclay.com. You get it. Let's go to the pour and we can talk more about the frequently asked cues while I smell this soap. Okay, so this whole thing may end up being nothing but emulsifying waxes because we've got a lot of questions. The biggest question whenever I have a recipe that includes an emulsifying wax is what can I sub in place of an emulsifying wax? Well, that is a good question and it always, always depends on what it is that you're making. Now, so I guess first up, what is an emulsifying wax and what do we use it for? Well, an emulsifying wax is going to be used to emulsify something, so essentially combine oil and water in a formula that has oil and water, but, so we're looking at lotions, you know, most of the time, but you also see me using an emulsifying wax in things like my solid conditioner bars or my uh, lotion bars from time time to time. And so that's a little bit different because the emulsion is not needed in that, right? Because there is not an oil component within any of it and, or an oil and water component rather within those. And so you don't really need the emulsion properties of it. So what am I using it for? All great questions. So first up, emulsifying wax, usually made out of either cetyl or cetyryl alcohol. So these are fatty alcohols that are derived from plant matter today. I think they used to be derived from like whales or something, the cetyl version of it, but not anymore. And a polysorbate of some kind. So an emulsifying wax that you're going to find for lotion properties is going to contain cetyryl alcohol and polysorbate 60 or cetyl alcohol and polysorbate 20. And we have deep dives on both of those ingredients, the cetyl and cetyryl, as well as the polysorbates, if you need more information on that for sure. And so in answer to that, if you were looking to sub in the uh, in a, a lotion formulation, for example, you would do that. You would sub in a acetyl alcohol or a polysorbate. So acetyl alcohol, cetyl alcohol, or a polysorbate, 60, 80, or 20. Again, we did a whole video on that. So you can sub in for that to get your emulsions for sure. But what about if we're working with like a product that contain, that's again, like a, like a solid hair conditioner that does not require an emulsion because again, no water is included in this formulation. Well, that's going to be where you're more going to like your your cationic um, emulsifiers. So you're going to be looking at like your BTMS 25s or your BTMS 50s because what I'm actually wanting to get from the emulsifying wax is going to be A, hardening, or two, the actual conditioning properties that exist within the BTMS formulations. So BTMS formulations uh, usually include the cetyl alcohol or acetyl alcohol. That's going to be the big difference between BTMS 50, which is cetyl alcohol, and BTMS 25, which is cetyl alcohol. So you do have all of the conditioning properties from those two, but you also have the hardening ingredients, which is what I'm looking for within a conditioner bar. So keeping that in mind, if you're not looking for the emulsion, what else could you potentially sub out or sub in place of an emulsifying wax? Well, beeswax is an option. If you are looking at a conditioner bar or a lotion bar, you could sub in beeswax if you're just looking for the bar hardening properties and you are going to be getting all of your moisturizing oils and whatnot and all the moisturizing ingredients from your oils or your butters. So that totally works as well. No, so again, it really does come down to your uh, your actually apl- your application, what it is that you're making. Because if you are making a lotion in and of themselves, an emulsifying wax proper is going to be a lot better than a beeswax. A beeswax will not emulsify. So yeah, the biggest reason for this is that beeswax will not is not an emulsifier. It will harden for sure, but using that in place of emulsifying wax in a lotion is not going to yield the emulsion that you're looking for. So I would not recommend a swap out for that within a lotion formulation. If you are formulating a lotion and you don't have any emulsifying wax, yes, you can use BTMS 25 or BTMS 50 because it does have the fatty alcohols that are going to be in there. So your, you know, your cetyl or your cetyryl. So those are definite, definite options too. Uh, 
again, with your solid lotion bars, you can go BTMS 25, BTMS 50, or your beeswax. But that's really going to be the only time that you can ever sub in beeswax in a formulation. It has to be a formulation wherein your emulsion is not required. That's not what you're looking for, not why you're using the, the e-wax in order to make that work. So that means a formulation that has no water or very limited water. Make sense? Now, I also get a lot of questions about what are natural options for emulsifying wax and or is emulsifying wax considered natural? Natural is a weird buzzword that isn't regulated, so it's a, you, I just you go at your own risk with all of that. But technically speaking, I, it, emulsifying waxes are naturally derived, right? Because they come from our plant oils, our coconut oils, our palm oils, etc., and so forth. There are uh, what have been like certified natural options that you can find out there. Not certified natural, but like EcoCert options exist out there for emulsifying waxes. And one of them would be all of them. All of them is, it's good-ish in, I don't, I don't like it in lotion. I don't like it in lotion because it is not super awesome for the actual emulsion without getting a whole lot of bubbling. I noticed that my lotions end up with a lot of bubbles on top and whenever I use all of them and not when I use other stuff. So all of them is made out of a satyral olivate and sorbitan olivate, which is going to mean these are both. So it's going to be your fatty alcohol, right? Satyral and sorbitan. That's going to be your thickener, you know, so both coming from olives. So that's how you know that what well, all of them is. You just kind of got to look at your eye and see eyes, but with the other natural options or if you don't have any of those products is there still something that can be used if all you have is beeswax to make your liquid lotion and you're still going to you know you're wanting to get your um well your emulsion really and the answer to that is yes there is an option it is going to be a little bit hit or miss though because when you're working with natural it can get really really tricky really really quickly so the biggest thing that I would say with uh, beeswax, if you're wanting to do a beeswax emulsion in a liquid, it would be essentially a beeswax plus a xanthan gum or some other form of thickener, uh, which could work. Uh, it's Again, it's hit or miss. I would start out with like 80% beeswax, 20% xanthan gum, see what you're working with there. But with, with stuff like that, that aren't actually formulated for your emulsion in a lotion, it really is going to be a lot of trial and error. You're going to be testing quite a bit, you know? Okay, and on to the cut of this uh, gorgeous beer soap that did not require any emulsifying waxes whatsoever. And I'm going to show you some speedy cuts to show that I am capable of doing that, you know? Just actually cutting a few at a time and then whatever. And also, I am dying that I'm having to do this for the videos right now and just show you the one thing that we're not talking about because there's another thing that I don't want to show you until you're four. So there's that. But so net net, yeah, emulsifying waxes, there's lots and lots of stuff that can be subbed, probably stuff that you already have within your, you know, soap shop. And it all is going to be dependent on what it is that you are making. Anything with an oil and water uh, formulation, I definitely recommend just using the emulsion the emulsifying waxes to ensure that you get that emulsion because you don't, th th these are professionally done. You know what I mean? To do this one thing. And so it, there's nothing more disheartening than mixing up a batch saying, well, I don't have any e-wax. I'm going to go get some beeswax or I, and I do have beeswax. It's fun to try with your beeswax and your xanthan gum, but you mix up a whole bunch of lotion and it starts to separate or it separates three months down the road. I really do think it's easier just to go ahead and get the e-wax. E-wax is not expensive, so if that's a price concern, e-wax and beeswax are very similar, similarly priced. If it's a natural concern, again, natural is a buzzword, so, you know, go do that at your own risk. But, um, yeah, all of them is an option. All of them is kind of expensive, can be a little bit temperamental within lotions. It's not terrible within, like, beard balms and stuff that don't have water in them. That's not terrible. I haven't hated it for that. And then for, so you're getting essentially the conditioning properties from the olive oil with that, just like you would be using your BTMS or your BTMS 50. So 
if you were, and again, any other thing like a beard balm or a lotion bar or your uh, hair conditioner bars or whatever, you can kind of sub pretty freely as long as a product is containing some sort of fatty alcohol. That's really kind of the long and the short of it. And but outside of that, I really would be careful. Definitely pay attention to your formulations and use the product that you have. As far as which emulsifying wax do I buy? Because there's a million of them on the on the planet. Yeah, there are, but it's all just kind of different names for the same thing. For the most part, every single emulsifying wax out there, if you're looking at Lotion Crafter, Brambleberry, um, what, Bulk Apothecary, uh, Wholesale Supplies, etc. and so forth, if you look at those INCI ratings, they all have the same ingredients listed, either a cetyryl alcohol plus a polysorbate 60 or acetyl alcohol plus a polysorbate 60. So you can kind of just get whatever when it comes to that and they will they will be fine. They're going to serve the p purpose for lotions and other emulsions. So yeah, as I thought, we would end up talking about emulsifying waxes this entire time and I am loving the soaps there. Aren't they cute? They're awesome. But it has been a frequently asked cue because I do use emulsifying waxes in manners other than intended. So I hope that that speedy talk helped someone out. And there it is, my take on some frequently asked cues. And yeah, obviously there's no one way to do uh, much of anything in all of this, but there's some information quick and dirty about e-wax as well as some other stuff. And obviously you make all of your own decisions within your business, within your, your life, within all of the things. My way is not the, the right way. It's just, you know, stuff that was asked. And sometimes people want to hear me talk about stuff. Sometimes. I hope you guys found that entertaining and fun, informative, all the things. Sudzers, thank you for existing. Thank you for being you. Buttered Soapery, make yourself known. You've already been perceived in a good way, so come say hi. And if you don't, that's fine too. But thank you for uh, having such a lovely chit chat with me at the Tide Fest. That was great. All the rest of you who are not Sudzers, I, you may have been at Tide Fest. I mean, I did go to another soap booth, and they were they were great too. I bought all kinds of stuff because I, it's what I do. But I'm out of here. I will see you guys all again tomorrow. I think it's a Project Soapway day. It'd be weird if it wasn't, but it will be another round of 31 Days of Soapmas. Soapy fun. Bye. <laughs>